So I started off shooting space photography outside, spending time out under the night sky, taking pictures, you know, practicing with my camera. And then these UFOs started to show up. And so I just began documenting them with my camera. So I had some very, very close encounters. They started showing up like left and right, especially whenever I had my camera. It seemed like they were purposefully getting in front of my camera. And so as that happened, you know, I began investigating them. And I began going out with my camera more to, to try and learn about them. And then a communication began with them as time passed. And they taught me more about spirituality. All this and more coming up on this episode of the Truth Seeker Podcast. Really quick, before we get started, if you are blessed by this ministry, if you're blessed by this platform, anything that I bring to the table, I ask you to partner with me via Patreon. Go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker and you unlock rewards. My entire discography of music, webinars, meditations, weekly hangouts, and so much more. Patreon.com backslash truth seeker. Go check it out. Won't you come, come and take me? into the Truth Seeker Podcast. Gargoyles, psychics, everything's ungodly, dark savage. Streaming live at truthseeker.com. She's not a Christian. Give it up, y'all. Your portal to the paranormal, esoteric, and all things spiritual. She's tampering in dark savage stuff. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Truth Seeker. Excited to be with you for another episode. Today, my guest is Lily Nova. Lily, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. It's been nice meeting you recently. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. And um, the pleasure is mine. And, uh, you know, what you're bringing to the table, your work and your discoveries, your spiritual journey and, um, you know, helping people, mm -hmm. helping people. That's what it's about, you know, owning your story because um, whatever fear can came and comes with that and we talked a little bit about that on, on on your show but you know what it does for you say the listeners or people who are going through something similar but they don't have any grid they don't have anyone that they can look at and say oh okay this is a safe zone this is normal or it's becoming normal for me so the work that you're doing and talking about your experiences your spirituality and what you're catching on camera is phenomenal so thank you for what you bring to the table with that yeah thank you so much it's been um a crazy journey the past couple of years that's for sure things are changing quickly <laughs> yeah right i mean it's crazy <laughs> it's part of it though part of the, the changing um of our personal seasons and then what we're going through by ourselves but it's the collective because that's the thing when you think i'm i'm going through these changes i'm having this awakening and you can kind of single yourself out, but it's it's comforting into knowing, hey, I'm not the only one. I'm right. not the only one going through this stuff. And uh, if you keep it to yourself and you don't tell anybody, just think of everybody across the board kept their weirdness and their symptoms, awakening symptoms, ascension symptoms, whatever you want to call it. People have different names for it to themselves. So owning your story is key. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, definitely. I agree 100%. Um, so it's really amazing that me and you and so many others are popping up with these these platforms and just sharing a safe space is incredibly important and there's so many more people going through this than you'd even know <laughs> i'm sure you get tons of people reaching out <laughs> yeah too many that's why i'm like hey meet lily hey meet these other people you know <laughs> send them a message they might have time to review your footage <laughs> i'm thankful for all the footage and for everybody who reaches out for you know, however they do. And if I can be a, of assistance, um, 
you know, but that's what it's about. You know, it's a, everybody's a, it's a, it is a community, a collective. It's not just the leader or the leaders or whatever the case is. And so we, I definitely want to promote that. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. this is like, if you have, if you're a little bit further down the road in any area, like you're, you got something that you can help somebody as far as like, hey, hold your stuff together. Hey, don't panic. Hey, this is normal. Hey, breeze through this or whatever the case is. And so uh, you'd be surprised that, um, you know, like you said, the, the people going through this stuff that they don't have nobody to talk to. Right. And, and I, we all have a piece to the puzzle, too. I've always, you know, in, in like business and stuff like that, they got something called like your avatar um, um, client or whatever. It's like you have this model of the person you're trying to sell something to or whatever the case is. And so you can kind of pander to them and stuff. But for me, it's like all my stuff is like I am the avatar customer. Like I'm like everything that I do and it's calculated to what I needed like in my awakening however many years ago or instead of putting it that far back what i needed today what i need needed yesterday or need right now becoming that for somebody else because you're feeling something that the collective's going through right yeah i agree 100 percent. whatever your experiences are that's i share all of my experiences <laughs> i don't have like an avatar either i just share what i've what I'm going through or what I have gone through. Yeah. We, you know, we, we mentioned, uh, cause just so everybody knows, Lily had me on her podcast. You guys got to go watch that episode for sure. Um, did, I did a lot of talking in that as I, as I do. So, uh, I'll try to do a little bit less today, but, um, <laughs> uh, we, you know, we talked about like the religious background and how people were saying, you know, UFOs and aliens or demons and those kind of things. Have you had the experience to, and obviously with them, they're, they're kind of, uh, you know, it's a battle of a narrative, if you will, but have you like shared an experience or shared an encounter and kind of opened up and been vulnerable with someone, whether it's on a podcast or a guest or whatever, and they're like, and they try to tell you that it wasn't that or it was something else, like mm -hmm. you had that experience yet? Yeah, it doesn't happen as much anymore. It, well, I just did a local podcast the other day and somebody in the chat had asked that. That's the first time I've heard that in a while. But whenever I was sharing my footage on TikTok and it was going pretty viral, so it's being shown to like all sorts of people, there was definitely a lot of comments where people said that. Not as much on YouTube, but definitely on TikTok, you know, thinking that it's, uh, you know, the devil or demonic and stuff like that. And then at first, for a second, I'm like, could this be something else? And I'm like, no, it feels like love. It can't, it can't be. And now there's no doubt in my mind, but yeah, the programming's just very deep. <laughs> uh, a message that the star beings have told me recently though, is that there's gonna be some disclosure with the Vatican and just the, the opening up of religions with the whole UFO phenomenon this year is what they told me so i'm looking forward to that and we need to like bridge the gap there yeah they need to let us know they need to stand <laughs> dumb they know what's up They're, they do <laughs> and we got out here finding it for ourselves and be like hey y'all got some explaining to do and if you don't do no explaining the, the people are leaving religions and in, in, in droves so you know you you really gotta um meet the people where they are, which is what religion is supposed to do, you know? So when it comes to this, you know, over the years, the, the Vatican has released um, some interesting statements about uh, our star brothers, if you will, and they may be closer to Jesus than we are, or about us, the crazy Christian thing, like as far as um, uh, Protestants go, they want to like um, convert them. <laughs> like if they are aliens and they live somewhere, somewhere else, like, we gotta, we gotta make sure that they, you know, get saved or something. It's like, wow. if they're out there, they're, they're most likely further along this saved path than we are. And they are what Jesus was or is, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they, sure. yeah, they've released some interesting statements over the years when it comes to that. Yeah, they have. And I remember that. So I'm wondering like, did everybody forget that? <laughs> they already said this? We forget really easily. <laughs> we do.
<laughs> yeah, I'm like, that's already been said. Like, so there are some people who are still like debating if UFOs are extraterrestrials and real. It's like the news already, like the government and the news has already been talking about this for the past two years. So <laughs> we mentioned, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it with you, but the, the, you know, the flat earthers or whatever. And I, again, you know, I love the flat earthers. You know, I, I get messaged all the time. Are you a flat earther? I'm like, well, I don't identify as that because there's like, it's like a religion. You know what I'm saying? There's laws and statutes against it and you can't, there is no space and there's all kind of weird, you know, it's, it's its own box kind of thing. And I don't want to be in any of those boxes, to be honest with you. So, but with, with most of the flat earth um, messages, I get anything about space or going off planet um, is out of the picture with the conversation. So um, I found as that, uh, you know, religion gets bigger, <laughs> the flat earth religion grows. Um, you know, a lot of the people in my audience, they're, they're like, you know, they, they, they'll shut everything down because it can't be off world visitors because you can't get off the world. So it's like interdimensionals. Um, maybe they come out of the earth or whatever the case is. And those um, concepts, have you had any talks with, with those people or Again, I'm not against flat Earth. The Earth might be flat, you know, you know, I have no idea. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a similar position as you. I'm like, I, I'm just glad that they're thinking outside of the normal box. <laughs> you know, they're asking questions. <laughs> so and, you know, none of us knows like the whole answers. Um, but I do get some of them. It's really interesting. I've got um, an astrophotography friend. So I take photos of, of space. Mm hmm. That's how I got started and how the UFOs started showing up. I was out stargazing and taking photographs uh, of different like nebula and galaxies and all of that. Um, and I have a friend who does that and that's the content that he posts, a lot of that content. And interesting enough, he gets a lot of fat, flat earthers, like tons of flat earthers. So I haven't gotten so many. Um, I know if you know Elizabeth April, I was watching a video of hers the other day and she was talking about how she's getting a lot of flat earthers recently. So I think it's very interesting. Um, yeah, so I do a little bit and it does seem like it's growing very rapidly. <laughs> it's a growing religion. I'm, I'm joking, guys. You guys got to, you know. Um, yeah, but I'm just, it's just leaning to the notion of it can't be this or it can't be that kind of thing. And um only a Sith speaks in absolutes, man, you know? And so the, when you talk about things are changing and seasons and everything, the information's coming quicker, you know, mm -hmm. or it's a flat earth, or maybe it's many of them on top of each other or whatever. It, it could be a lot of things going on, but, you know, I, I remember uh, years ago, I was sharing a uh, experience I had that it was Jesus, right? I had this encounter with, with Jesus in, in prayer with some friends and uh, just a beautiful, uh, being of light, the, the the energy, it felt the love, the uh, compassion, uh, but but also the sense of like heart was broken for humanity. And it was like a vision that I had that light engulfed my sight and it was beautiful. It was, but it, it hurt. It was a um, impartation, if you will, years ago. I remember sharing that on a podcast with a guy like I was kind of being vulnerable to share that because it was like really personal. He's like, oh, yeah, that wasn't Jesus. That was a demon. I'm like, oh, OK, wow. I just should have kept that to myself. I didn't it wasn't open for your criticism, but I guess it was for sharing. But that's the kind of thing where, like, you know, these narratives kind of bleed over. Say, yeah. And, but his thing was that because Jesus isn't real. Mm. So it, it had it couldn't have been Jesus. Yeah, because he's not real. Right. It, but anything else it could have been, you know, um, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, yeah, that's what I meant about sharing your your truth and your experiences. And then people are like quick to take it and, you know, mm -hmm. and use it for their own narrative, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the absolutes. I mean, I'm very open minded. And I think it's important for us to be open minded because there's so much more out there that we don't know. We are very, very young. Our species and our planet is incredibly young. To act like we know everything is just, it's ridiculous. And back on the Jesus topic, so I didn't know if Jesus was real or not. And after, and even like organized religion, I felt 
kind of there was some tension between it for me um but because like you know a lot of like just the narratives and programmings and everything um i told you i read this book conversations with god and it really helped open my mind to the true nature of source and in all of that but after the ufos started coming to me and i started meditating and things like that then jesus started coming to me and angels started coming to me and that just blew my mind i'm like oh my god he's real he's real and he's all being born he's he's not like coming back externally he he told me that he's coming back through within us as christ consciousness and i just thought that was very beautiful so whenever people say like those absolutes like that can't be true or whatever i just always pray and ask that they have an experience of their own so that they can know the truth for themselves yeah 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 you know and i would say for me it's like the whole absolutes or saying you know what we know and it's a matter of fact and there's all kind of like i don't know that jesus existed like as a man i don't know that i wasn't there right I wasn't there i can't i can't tell you i don't know that there was a, a man named Jesus from Nazareth who did these things. I know that that story is much more ancient, but I I know what happens when I pray and when I put my faith and I try to live a life conducive to that person. And I know there's an inner dialogue and, and I'm stepping into relationship with something that answers by that name and by those characteristics of that uh, persona or person that I read about in the scriptures that answers to that name that shows up with compassion and love and those things. So, um, you know, I know, so I know that, I know that to be true. And he doesn't care if you call him Jesus because that's not his name to begin with, right? If we, it's Yeshua, you know, or what, like he never heard those names or, and then it gets into the other religions and belief systems. Do they have a character that is compassionate do they have somebody that they follow that shows up that answers their prayers that you know defends them and is a friend is a father or is judgmental upon them like whatever you know jesus like the i like we all have a different jesus mm -hmm. like there's this notion in the christian tradition it's like you guys are teaching another jesus it's a different one it's not the same well we all have a different one because yours is a little bit more moody than than mine and yours won't let you have fun yours won't let you have a glass of wine yours is beat you over the head every time you do something wrong mine hey man you got this bro you're gonna make it next time i'm gonna give you another chance to try so there when we're talking about the difference of jesus or religion or the names and stuff to be very honest of what we know um we only know what we've experienced and what we've account encountered and even that's on the table to you know for us to hold loosely if you will mm -hmm. yeah and we're also creators of our own reality so we can like if you believe that i don't know for an example like if you believe you're going to hell you may experience something like that because it's your belief our belief is so incredibly powerful and I have actually had encounters with other <clears throat> other spiritual beings like uh, Buddha and uh, Ganesh. So it's interesting. So there's all of these different like, I don't know if you'd say like avatars or spiritual beings from around the world too. Um, yeah, so I think that's really fascinating. It's like nobody's wrong. Um, everybody is maybe right in their own way, I guess. Yeah. The conversation is a lot bigger than we thought. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and, and I think Jesus, the, you know, taught those things that every everywhere you see this, that's me. It's like what he was telling his disciples. Like when you see, when anytime you see an act of compassion, I'm 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 there somewhere. Anytime yeah. you see, you know, somebody take up for a widow or an orphan, somebody pay for some any act of, of kindness. I see him now. I'm now I've learned to see him because he was only, you know, in religion or in well, not just religion, but in my church and all the other churches were, were wrong kind of thing. And, um, you know, the more you live life, the more you experience encounter like that love that is imparted through whatever um, Christ or that that you follow, Jesus being one of them, um, you, you expand it. And then before you know it, 
you become that character of compassion and you and people start seeing that in you and i get messages and this is silly so don't think that i entertain this um are could you be jesus are you him no you know what i'm saying but but i respect the idea that people bow to that divinity in you and in me and in everybody and that's the name of the game and so all of of that is to be said to allow your heart to change and your vision to change in the way that you look at things and you look at people and um not to say that jesus or love is here or love is there and it's not here he actually said that you, that you won't have to do that because when he shows up everyone will know but they taught us that that would be external looking in the sky just like you just said that he would come that way but he's coming in the hearts and minds of individuals in small acts of kindness compassion used to be racist i'm not anymore i used to be stingy with money i used to be whatever i'm not anymore anything that is beauty man to salute that and honor it um and that is christ mm -hmm. I like that. That's beautiful. And I, I want to transition that into kind of what we do, um, because I think that it takes a trained eye to be able to look at things differently according to the light that is in you. So um, what you've been um, filming, catching on camera, and we have, I haven't even, we just jumped right into the conversation, but um, <laughs> our um, entities or, or ships and, and many different anomalies that you've been uh, filming in the night sky. Um, I haven't seen if you have, you have some, you have a lot of sky footage, uh, mm -hmm. pictures. You also have stuff inside in your room and, and, and all over the place, really. It's again, it, he's only there, only at night. I was like, no, 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 they're, they're around here right now too. It's like, oh God, let me film them here. So. Yeah. If you want to just kind of set set that up, like how your experiences started and you started seeing them and filming them and those kind of things and what those them are, just so kind of people just kind of introduce your work, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So like I mentioned before, I started off as an astrophotographer during COVID, during the, the pandemic. Uh, before that, I was a nutritionist. So I'm, I'm a nutritionist. That's what I was practicing before. Now I've dropped everything to per pursue this because it's so incredibly important. But um, so I started off shooting space photography outside, spending time out under the night sky, taking pictures, you know, practicing with my camera. And then these UFOs started to show up. And so I just began documenting them with my camera. I had no, I wasn't like into UFOs before this. I was basically like a clean slate, but I was open-minded. So I had some very, very close encounters and <laughs> which just like rocked my world. And they, it seemed like they started showing up like left and right. Like, especially whenever I had my camera, it seemed like they were purposefully getting in front of my camera. And so as that happened, you know, I began investigating them. And I began going out with my camera more to, to try and learn about them. And then a communication began with them as time passed. And they taught me more about spirituality. So these were extraterrestrials. Um, specifically the first beings that I saw are from the Lyran constellation. But since then I've had contact. It's like once your man, your mind opens and expands all of these other, like, I mean, I've seen like been visited by fairies, by Bigfoot, all of these <laughs> incredible wild things that sound like they're just like myth and lore since this happened angels jesus it just totally like opens you up to experience these other dimensions but so so these beings were um extraterrestrials from lyra and from the pleiades star cluster and a few other ones the star sirius which is a really big part of like ancient egyptian uh culture and their history a lot of cultures around the world like they were like they loved the star sirius and now i know why because i believe teachers from sirius were coming down and helping to guide guide humanity or they built it themselves the syrians possibly 
Um, but so these beings started showing up and I started capturing them on camera. And then I began initiating contact with them because then it becomes like exhilarating. Like you start feeling all of the the love from these beings and it was like a profound experience they started teaching me like spirituality and like one of the first things that they told me was that we are all one you know we're all one we're all connected we're all connected through consciousness and so that continued and i've caught like things in my room too so so i was catching these things outside at night at first and then i once i began initiating contact with them like me asking them to appear and developing a relationship with them, which I did this like daily, every single day for like a year. Uh, I would go out and I started going out at sunset. So it's not only at night whenever you can make contact with these beings or see these UFOs. And during the day, a lot of the time, like that Merkaba that you caught, they come as like orbs of light or like, like, geometric shapes of light and you can really catch them if you point towards the sun so i would go out every day at sunset and i would be recording um i would usually feel i would receive like spiritual downloads and feel this overwhelming sense of love my ears would ring sometimes so i'd know that they were there and <clears throat> sometimes i use the camera to actually see them because they're not they're not all like physical metal these ufos <clears throat> Some of them are like interdimensional vehicles or Merkabas, like light, they're, they're vehicles of light. So I'd use the camera to see them because the camera could pick up more than our eyes can see. So that's a, a good tip too, if anybody wanted to try that, like pointing towards the light, you'll, you'll, you're better able to catch something or pointing towards the sun. So I started doing that each day and I remember I was filming a video. So I started sharing these things online because I'm like what am I like what am I doing I asked them one day I was like what am I doing like I'm out here with my camera every day making contact with you guys I've dropped everything I haven't worked in a year I'm like what's going on what am I doing <laughs> you know before that I was like a nutritionist I was so passionate about it I dropped everything for this and as I was asking them so a telepathic communication began with them at this time after I asked that, as soon as I asked that, I looked up and I saw a sign that said revolution. And so I knew at that point that I was to share this information and in, in what we're doing right now, what all of us are doing and what the people who are watching are doing is helping to fuel and start a revolution that's going to change everything. So that's incredibly important and it's exciting. Um, so yeah, I just, I capture them on camera a lot. I've developed a relationship that I've developed a relationship with God or source, you know, we're all connected. I've caught these things in my room too. While I was filming a video, I had like an orb fly past me. So then like I set cameras up in my room and I caught a few kind of weird anomalies. Like one was like a straight line that just went right over my head in a bunch of orbs in different shapes. <laughs> Whenever I started catching them inside, I was like, oh, wow, like they they can be inside too. And I actually sent that footage to um, like a doctor who's the head of this a paranormal society in St. Louis. And I was like, what is this? And he was like, well, you definitely got paranormal activity on there. And he tried to hire me <laughs> to, to film like whenever they go out on ghost tours and stuff. So yeah, that was just mind blowing. I've also caught a light being it. And if you'd like, I can share some of this footage. Okay, all right. So let's see, one of the ones that I got indoors, I'll just sh share that one since we were just talking about that, is this like light being. This was inside and at this time I could feel them around me a lot. And I got the nudge to take a picture. I took a picture and at first I thought it was just like one being of light. And then if you look really closely, you can actually see kind of outlines of other beings over here just pretty trippy like you can kind of see a face right there I don't know if you can see it well through the screen share but uh, later on as I was looking at this I discovered I actually think it's a group of beings you can see arms and legs right there somehow they can manifest I mean our laws of science and technology do not apply with them <laughs> they've got very very advanced and so I believe this is a group of them actually. 
So there's one example. Uh, one of my favorite pictures is right here. This is while I was out making contact during sunset. And so I set my camera up to take consecutive photos. And then I went and sat in front of the camera to set the intention out. And I began meditating. And it, there was a craft that appeared in three different photos right up here. And I've got a zoomed in version that, that is cleaned up a little bit, but that appeared in three different photos and it was actually different in each photo. It looked like it was like actually changing shape as it was manifesting. So that's one of my favorites. Here's a kind of more polished, cleaned up version of that craft. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's one the, of my favorites. So what, so what are the odds, right? Because we don't know. I'm not saying what this is and what it isn't, but what, you know, but it's all to, to think about the odds that, especially with like the Merkaba thing, um, that, you know, the Merkabas come from, we can turn our bodies into Merkabas and travel as a vehicle. Well, well, maybe your body doesn't turn into it. Maybe it's projected out of you. And maybe the things that we're interacting with are in us and they can be seen outside of us. What are the odds that that is you or your spirit vessel that you caught on, on camera that's like watching over you or connected to you or projected around you? What are, what are the thoughts on that? I say that also because a lot of the, when you talk about meditating and moving your heart into love and compassion, they've been caught on camera, those orbs going inside of people. Um, a friend of mine, Nico Morales, who may have turned me on to your work first. I'm not I'm not sure. Um, he was sending me a bunch of stuff where people were catching stuff on camera. And he's got footage of him doing it. And all of these little orbs and little uh, wisp and stuff come around him as he's moving his heart to compassion and thanksgiving and stuff. They show up on camera and they're just like all around him spinning. The, uh, to be honest with you, the video is so compelling that it looks fake wow because it's like wow that's pretty in, intense what you caught on camera but knowing that i've went out and filmed myself you know meditating like like you and in the sun and, and seeing them at like actually coming into your auric field so what it so what is the idea that they're coming into your auric field helping you to build your Merkaba that you can project, that you can, call, whether it's always in, I don't know the science behind it, but what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I agree with that. And I could see that. Um, well, in some of the beings and some of the extraterrestrials, this is probably, this is kind of mind bending, um, but some of the beings that I've met, they said that they were actually versions of me. Yeah. <laughs> so that pretty, that tripped me out. Um, as for the Merkaba and the orbs going in, I could definitely see that. And I don't quite understand how that works, but I definitely could see that. That's what these beings and these energies have really helped me do is, is like moving into my heart space and teaching me. They're like guiding me. And right now my ear just started ringing. Um, <laughs> that's usually a sign that they're around. And the Merkaba, that's something that they've been showing me for the past couple of months. And they've been helping me to develop and activate so i could definitely see that that's pretty fascinating yeah we it's hard for us because we identify with the self mm -hmm. you know we identify with we're just us that's it mm -hmm. and that's not true on any level any level especially like even with like your anatomy and bacteria and gut biome like you are there's a lot of different things living in you on you around you um physically you know you got to have a trained eye i love that idea of having a trained eye like the third eye to see spiritually you have to have a trained third eye but to see the microscopic entities on you around you in you you have to have another trained eye or a lens which mm -hmm. is a microscopic lens to be able to see these these wars, these, hey, a lot of the stuff we're seeing in the sky looks like that 
which is in a petri dish that you can see like yeah. some stuff i'm seeing like crazy far out like oh my god what just happened stuff hey <laughs> you know i want it to be humanoid no it's it's actually bloboid and it takes the shape of whatever you give it oh god really that's weird <laughs> you know um but to yeah. be able to see them right and seeing them with like you said the the different lenses mm -hmm. there's um a scripture in in the new testament and it says that we behold through a glass darkly dimly or like a shadow or a mirror that there's this projection um and so in my experiences and my study is like catching glimpses of light uh, from different spectrums off of different things allowing light to bounce off of things differently and using a different lens whether the, the, the light is bouncing off of the uh, riverbed like you can see stuff that's the crazy thing you can gaze if you look directly at the sun good luck like I do it a lot and it's hard it's not easy you can do it but good luck seeing anything else besides the sun mm -hmm. you know and so that's the idea of like blocking the sun out to catch its rays because mm -hmm. those so-called angels and things live and dwell in different spectrums of light mm -hmm. and the rays of the sun and there's different colors of rays there's different rays and spectrums of the of every light and every shadow as well um but seeing the light bounce off of and reflect off of the water in, in, in the river I've seen some, I've had some profound experiences and then um, I, I have a, a divination bowl it's just a bowl but I, I put um, either water or wine in it um, after having a prof profound experience on the river to recreate it and then seeing what they, they did this in the Bible um, mm -hmm. and then having them show up but not even with the naked eye because I didn't know what to look for couldn't see it but I said hey let me get my trusty camera and let me film the water reflecting the sun. And sure enough, they're all in the background, floating around, around the sun, that if I look directly at it, I can see the sun and I want to acknowledge the sun. I'm looking at the sun, you know, there's a relationship there. But also want to see the angels of the sun that dwell around it and carry messages and information and consciousness back and forth. So it seems like these different ways of cap capturing or gazing at the light, which is what we're doing even right now. If your eyes are open, you're doing that. Many mm -hmm. different colors, spectrums, lights coming in. The, the light within you is telling you what it is and, and then it projects outside of you and it actually becomes that. Like all of this stuff's going on through these different um, projections of, of light that we're experiencing. Yeah, that's something that uh, they've taught me too. We we are all light. We're all like frequency, vibration, and light. It's just very fascinating. Yeah, our minds are going to be blown whenever we start to see, you know, more of, of what's out there. And with that, I want to show you uh, a video real quick of light that I captured. I Can you see it right now? Yeah. Okay. So you can see there's... It may be kind of hard to see through screen share, but there's a bunch of orbs near the sun, a bunch of light coming out. And then I have this, this G, I call it the Rubik's cube orb because it changes shape and it just flies right through there. So I'll just go ahead and show you. You see all those by the sun? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it zooms in and slows it down. This thing was crazy looking. Oh, heck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that wild? I try to call them to me sometimes. The ones that are low, they, they usually don't come. This was a rare day. This was... Huh, yeah, look, that's look, awesome. Yeah, look at the shape changing. It's crazy looking. It's so wild, and I was just thinking about it earlier. I think about it all the time because I've caught the, you know, things that look like birds, like by the sun flying, and it's crazy. But you know, we may have mentioned it on on your show, but how 
and, and I have doves that show up in my backyard, like, and I know they're connected to the doves of heaven. Just saying, um, they was out there a while ago. I was <laughs> messing with them and stuff, I'm them and everything. But uh, how this the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus as a dove, and in our in our iconography and in our minds, we think that a dove that was the spirit. It's it's talking about these celestial energies spirits that rest upon us and 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 i think that in in many cases it it can or does look like what what you just caught on camera Mm -hmm. this very graceful energy descending to earth to coming to be around you to change the way you feel to anoint you to carry out a task i mean so much to be said of what's going on but that story is a biblical story from Genesis to Revelation. This, these descending angels, the angels that le- leave their first estate and come and join with mankind to fight this great battle, this ascension that the earth is is going through, and we are the inhabitants. And somebody doesn't want this to happen because they're going to have to give up power, kind of thing, um, as the meek inherit the earth, which is what's going on. But these spirits, if you call them, I mean, they're all of those things that we think they are and none at the same time, you know? So it's like, they're extraterrestrials, they're interdimensionals, they're angels, they're demons. They don't, obviously, you know this, they don't like say, who are you? We are interdimensionals from whatever, you know, we are the extraterrestrial. They don't say, they don't say that like, um, but the way they're interacting with us, and and you don't have to try to catch them on camera to interact we're interacting by default but when you become conscious of it and aware to ask or sit in the light and ask to see them or better yet to hey what do you need me to do i'm available i want to help do you need do you need hands because i notice you don't have hands you don't have thumbs. I've got thumbs. I can open doors. I can do things here. That's the message of the scriptures is the, 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 the inhabitants of the earth working with the inhabitants of the heavens coming together to change this thing. And, uh, and I feel like, you know, you are capturing it on camera. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. And that's a good point. Like one of the the biggest things is just asking. So anybody can have these experiences and they don't always come on camera for me. I know they did that a lot, especially in the beginning so that I could, because you know, the world wants proof yeah. of these things. So that's part of it. Uh, you know, a lot of people need to see it to believe it. And I mean, I understand that. Um, but then as I kind of graduated and learned how c- to connect with these energies, uh, they, they show up less like in a physical way because I can sense them. I'm beginning to sense them more, you know, there. And they're all around all of us. So anybody can do this too. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's not always about capturing them on camera, although it's fun to capture them on camera because our eyes can't always, you know, see that light spectrum. So that's always fun. So I'll always invite them to come on camera, but <laughs> it doesn't have to, to be about that. And anybody can develop a relationship with these with these beings with these spirits like you said asking is like the the biggest like first thing ask believe receive is one of the things that the big things that they were teaching me in the beginning ask believe receive yeah have you seen any of things that look like birds or look like they're that has wings or anything like that no i think that's really interesting um because while you were mentioning that i feel like they may come to each of us in different ways because of our context. Yeah. So I, I feel like that's a big part of it. So th- the doves are like personal to you and, and you have the, the scriptures. So maybe that's that's a way that you understand. So maybe that's how they come to you. I haven't quite seen them that way. What I found is with this whole spiritual thing, it's very unique to the indivi- individual for how they show up. I would love to... to uh, experience a dove though so maybe i yeah, will you know they're i've i've only seen a couple and they're like really 
far away. Like it's hard to, it's very hard to see them, but when you slow the footage down and I, I gotta have a better camera. I just, I have to, I need to find the right combination that's gonna be able to, you know, uh, set the ISO low and the, the shutter speed. That is, cause this stuff, you know how fast they are. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and, and to be able to zoom, cause I got good footage. No, I, let me, I don't have good footage. I've got footage. Let's say that I want better because it's enough to say, hold on. Like, what is that? That's something swimming with mm -hmm. wings yeah. that is far away, you know, and it looks like a bird kind of thing. So it's not, you know, it's not like a, like it's an everyday thing. Like I've seen it and, you know, I think the interpretation of, of how we, you know, what we say it is, like that's gonna make it to where you pursue it again. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh God, it's demons, you better be careful. You know, you're probably done, you are you know, for a while anyway, unless you learn something or open up or get brave or something yeah. to go out. But yeah, what we say it is, is the, is the strange thing. And, um, and it becomes that, but also there's they still really exist though like whatever that that dev like thing that you saw is like a combination of both like we're creating part of it but also there's all of these things that like they actually exist yeah uh so yeah. i would I'm, love I'm to just, i'm just saying that the 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 g I'm, I'm saying to get rid of the dove thing <laughs> oh <laughs> like, as far as like the icon well the iconography is cool because it is what it is but but it's an invitation into something deeper mm -hmm. to the spirits that um resemble a dove not even in th that they look like a bird or maybe even wings but that they they are graceful right and they are beautiful kind of thing so a spirit descending as a dove upon jesus and then we're seeing different spirits if you will descending gracefully like that whatever you that looked pretty graceful to me you know i don't know what that was so um there's the context to say what if maybe who knows um because other people see that and they say that's a bag mm -hmm. it's a piece of plastic that's a cellophane from a, a cigarette pack somebody took their cigarette wrapper and threw it and and it was just reflecting that's all you saw was cellophane so dust that's another big one that's dust yeah the dust one is is cool and um <laughs> i tell you what dust is, is real cool i'll say that um <laughs> it's called we, we've made it common for a reason you know um that we could just say it's just dust mm -hmm. um i'll tell you this biblically um we are made out of dust mm -hmm. and the serpent was cursed to the ground to eat dust mm -hmm. so when people say that's just dust there's no just anything it's just dust to you to someone something eats dust i don't i've never seen a snake eating dirt if we think or, or dust or mold or like i've never seen a snake eating dust so what is the serpent and what is the dust so mm -hmm. now we're going around and say, oh it's just dust it's just dust there is no we're you talking about part tiny dust by definition is tiny particles of matter that are so light that they can levitate and travel by the wind look it up mm -hmm. matter that is so light that it can travel by the wind wind in the bible is ruach spirit mm -hmm. it's the same word yeah wow particles of matter that have become so light it can travel by the wind mm -hmm. so when we're talking about it's just dust and i know what they mean it's just dust but there is no just dust because if you go to NASA, uh, NASA Soho website. I don't know if you've been there yet, but they film the sun and uh, they block out certain things, but it was wild. Like, and, and I, I wrote up an article on this. It's, it's not published yet. I just got it out kind of like my notes or whatever in my own discovery, but um, saw all of these things around the sun. Like I'm just massive. And it wasn't just the, the little particles, it was, things that I was like, hey, that's a UFO, because I see them. Oh, that's one. Oh, that's one. Like back to back. It's like, oh, something's going on. To see that many this fast. Oh, God, they're everywhere. Um, had that experience. 
got home, started filming them, and I still saw them. Wow, that's when it was like, dang, something's up. Some, something happened. Yeah. It's never like always like this, you know, or, or at least I never seen it to say that. Um, and I started filming it and then I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. And, you know, my wife was like, hey, that kind of looks like bugs. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of bugs. Mm-hmm. The, the, and, and, I, and I can't, you know, there's this weird place that we get to where we want it to be true. And then it's bugs or dust. Nope, those are UFOs, those are angels, and it becomes that to you in your own mind. Um, but we have to have we have to have health, healthy skepticism. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, is it bugs? Let's let's look at them. What are they doing? Is it dust? You know, particles that that are not alive and they're not intelligent. And then you start seeing them do things, communicating with each other, all kinds of wild stuff. But I end up going to the NASA SOHO website to to because I heard that they have 24 hour footage of the sun that you can go look at. And they have gifts and images that they just kind of render and edit before they put out kind of thing. But there was an article right on the on the front website of the Soho website that said that all of these amateur astron- astronomers were catching um, some kind of weird uh, anomaly on film and they're riding in in droves wanting to know what this object was that approached the sun got really close turned around and flew away and so they had they wrote this long article and they said hey we want to hate to bust everybody's bubble but it's not a ufo we want it to be a ufo but it's not guys it's only dust every now and then a dust particle comes into view of the camera and that was just dust flying in and turning around. That's all it was, dust. It so doesn't was, turn around. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, wow, man, like, are they lying to us? Mm-hmm. It's like, they're like, yeah, you know, the, all, all the flat earthers would tell you, like, the big thing is that NASA um, is a, the Hebrew word for dis- to deceive. It's really NASA, but NASA, N A S A W, NASA, NASA. Mm-hmm. Um, See, it's NASA, not NASA, but it means to deceive in Hebrew, right? So they say they're 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 being deceptive, and obviously they are. If we can go out with amateur stuff and catch anomalies, and they've got what they got, and they haven't caught anything convincing, somebody's lying for sure, for sure, for sure. But they're not lying; they're telling you the truth. You just you just think that it's just dust. Mm-hmm. They didn't lie to you. You just don't know what dust is. You just think dust is dead matter. It's not alive, that that you're not dust, that you're not uh, maybe a, I don't know, uh, actually 150 trillion cells make up the human body. Is that the number? 150 trillion. And those are all cells or particles that by themselves would probably, probably look like dust or maybe not by themselves a cluster of them i don't know how many it takes to see it flying this Mm -hmm. tiny anomaly but it's it this stuff is in the nuances that you gotta peer deeper and there's like the potency is in the things that everybody else has called mundane that is called just dust Mm -hmm. or just whatever um in the in the bible jesus um he a lot of the people that got to encounter him in like really cool ways mm-hmm. were they were just a prostitute oh she's just a prostitute and no ever oh this it's nothing special she's just a prostitute or oh, they're, they're just lepers or oh, that guy is just a crippled man he's just this he's just that and it's everybody had called them common and overlooked to say you know what good can come from there and then Jesus is like, hold on, let me look a little bit closer because they they have something beautiful to share. It's in the things that we have called common or mundane, which is nature, which is grass, which is dirt, which is even the insects that are all connected to what we call God, which is consciousness, which communicates through everything, whether it's through a download and a dream and a vision or literally telling all of the um, 
bugs or animals what to do and let you capture it on film or if that angel's flying by or wasn't mm -hmm. this consciousness that you're connected with you ask it yeah is there one out there can i see it can i catch it on camera right and it happens um the things that people laugh at and, and mock and the dust ah oh, that's just dust the you know those who we show this kind of footage to it's like like yeah they, this is the this is the big one they're gonna they're gonna know after this one oh that's just dust oh you didn't want to believe to begin with you know <laughs> um yeah crazy thing about the just dust is that they disappear behind the chemtrails Mm. So however big that just dust is they, they think it's very like close in between you know whatever but i don't know how far a, a particle of dust has to be for you to see it but a lot of the things that i've captured that people are saying that's just us no i've got them going behind the clouds right Literally, the jets are spraying chemtrails like however high they are up these things go by you, you see them and then they go behind it they're not mm. in front of them so this just dust stuff starts uh, losing its, um, you know, the, the mm -hmm. past, bigger questions. It's not, can't say exactly what it is, but I know what it's not. And it's not just dust. Right. Yeah, I used to film them a lot too during the day. There was a period where I was filming like the chemtrails and I guess I was learning about how like, you know, they're not good and everything and documenting just how crazy it would get sometimes with all of them and i found it interesting like they would kind of like trail these planes i don't know if, it, if you've experienced that maybe it's just because that was you know something that i could aim at but they so i've got tons of videos where there's just tons of these orbs just going in and out and that's yeah perfect what you said if it goes behind a cloud like the dust is it's got to be really close up for the cap for the camera to be able to capture it i think um sometimes the planes are dropping stuff for them mm. that could uh, be know, so. um i got it on camera mm -hmm. um th there's these there's this weird they're either dropping it or blocking it so we can't see it mm -hmm. you know and probably they're definitely they're definitely blocking so we can't see it but um, there's this weird anomaly where, um, and I've got it on camera twice, mm -hmm. where it's a, a bar, it's a, a rod, if you will, that, that two lights show up and they, they're like here. And then in between the, the middle starts coming into view and it starts forming, but it's very faint, but you can see a rod in mm -hmm. the sky and two bright, brighter lights or, or whatever they are, you can see white. And then I'm um, like, what's that? That's interesting. And I'm looking at it in slow-mo and then this, one of the UFOs or orbs or whatever they are, comes in a direct line straight down and goes directly through the tube, the rods. As soon as it hits it, the thing becomes whole and it lights up and lights turn on on it it gets bigger and expands and goes into the sun whoa got it on camera <laughs> got it rendered yeah um, that's crazy <laughs> that one and then that was the first time and my wife she's like ah that's i don't know what that is she like she like wants to everything's fine government's not lying you know and it, trust me I, I part of me i have to be able to tap into that when i need to as well hey everything's fine i'm okay yeah <laughs> but um <laughs> but she saw that footage and she's like probably the most compelling footage you got i just i don't know what it is but, and that's why it's like is that a bug too and she get mad so like so that's a bug too huh <laughs> <laughs> Know what that awesome. is and uh but no I've, I've got that anomaly um on camera twice so there, there was that one and then a couple weeks after there was one that started to form that came out of the chemtrail it's like the, the chemtrail was left behind the smoke and then there was like a, a 
a spot in it that became, you could see it more. Mm -hmm. And as the other started to dissipate, this one stayed. Mm -hmm. um, and then one flew, a, a, a orb flew really fast. It was bright, spinning mm -hmm. it through. It, it went through it and grabbed it, took it. And as soon as it touched it, it turned black and flew with it. And I'm like, hmm, what's <laughs> That's some pretty cool footage. I have no idea what the, what they're doing. Like in my mind, like I don't know what what they're doing. A part of me, we we had a podcast a couple of weeks ago with these guys who were catching some cool stuff on on film, and thought about maybe trading like resources with them, like the, like an exchange of of resources where getting stuff out of the the earth or the ocean or something like that, and they're like maybe exchanging stuff halfway. I don't know. It's like there's a lot of speculation and um, I don't know exactly what all is going on just because there's a lot going on it's not just one thing or one you know anomaly I do know that they're trying to block it for so that we can't see it um, there's this other other theory that like some of the chemtrail stuff that they're spraying and seeding the clouds is so that they can pick them up on radar. Mm. Like like the Navy and, and Air Force can pick them up on radar because we know that there's barium in the atmosphere, there's, there's heavy metals. And so if you're trying to police your skies and they have the ability to cloak and literally to travel faster than the speed of thought, speed, mm -hmm. speed of light, um, how do you catch them slipping if there's a war if they're at war with these these guys or whatever the case is um who knows and and, and and in some weird way maybe all of those things are are true and happening at the same time right or different beings and different types of spray or whatever the case is i don't know yeah that's very interesting yeah and whenever i was seeing a lot of uh ufos especially in the beginning i contacted mufon which is like the mutual ufo network this is before i knew anything I was just like, there's something weird going on. I've seen like 15 UFOs in two weeks. I don't know. And they were actually like worried for me because they were like, that's peculiar. They said, this is peculiar. Mm -hmm. The experiences that I was having. Um, and uh, but yeah, talking to them, I discovered they asked me if I'd been seeing any black helicopters. So what I began to notice as I was seeing these UFOs, sometimes whenever they appear or they they manifest or you'll see black heli helicopters. So I think that, yeah, they're definitely like, they're trying to track them. They're trying to catch them for sure. So I just thought that was interesting. So now whenever I see a black helicopter, I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> yeah, it's funny to, to, to mention this um, on, on here, but, you know, there's a, a you know, a little fear or hesitancy to to release some of the footage that I got um just because I know the footage that's out there and they're like this is the best we got and it's like and I'm didn't t the stuff I got is it's mind blowing I don't know I, and I I don't know I'm trying to move into relationship with them hello hi how's it going I'm coming peace and you yeah. know and so I know that's where the, the spiritual aspect comes into play and and they are and they do there's those i don't know if all of them are there i don't know if all of them are conscious i don't know if you know there's um there's a lot going on and there's a lot of different ones and some of them are are big you know and some of them are smaller and uh but i do i, I say for i don't know for safety precautions but i guess if i was scared for for that it would i wouldn't even be talking about it because would be targeted out and there's all these targeted people and stuff like that that they're um you know that i don't want it, like the stuff i have and i hate to say that and then not put the footage out and then something happened oh you told us hey we got our eye on you but these people know they they know who you are yeah. you're not like they know everything we tell them who we are we put it out on the internet we're freely telling everybody what we're in contact with you know, so it's like, I'll be secretive. Like, no, you freely share. You have blog posts about it. You're trying to, they know exactly. They knew before you told them. 
they probably knew by looking at your school records. They probably knew because they know what birth sign, what astrological sign you're born under. They know where the stargazers come from. They know where the, the, um, you know, wh whatever you're, that's, that's where you're from. Whatever so sign you're, you're birthed under, like they, they know who you are. Like you'll see that when the birth of Christ, they were waiting on the Messiah that would come at this time. And it said that his star appeared. Like when he was born, his they all saw his star in the sky. And they're like, hey, what time was it? They knew by the hour of his birth who it was. Wow. Oh, he's here, man. The Messiah is here and he's come to mess us up. Mm -hmm. We got to give up our throne. We got to yeah. quit abusing people. He's going to tell on us when he prays, things happen. So that's the the idea that, that we are called to something or in touch with something greater than ourselves. That's why we are here for this reason, for sure. I believe it. Right. Yeah, definitely. And I, I like what you said about like, they already know who you are because recently I found that that is the case. <laughs> like they already know who you are. You, uh, you don't know who you are. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to remember. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, we're different. A lot of us feel different growing up too. Um, but yeah, definitely. Sorry. I just lost my train of thought thinking about that for a second. <laughs> no, it's, um, Oh, about sharing. Um, so at first I was nervous to share. And whenever I started sharing it, I did get a lot of people because on TikTok, it can be pretty easy to go pretty viral. So I had a lot of people commenting on, on my stuff and, and, um, yeah, I had quite a few people who were commenting, you know, aren't you afraid? Like, uh, you know, they were afraid I was going to go missing or, um, you know, that the government was going to get me and all that stuff. But, but yeah, I just kept doing it because we're protected and that's what we have to share. We have to share our experiences. Oh, that's big. We are protected. And I think that they are the protectors. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're watching over us. There's, there's, there's universal law and in, in order that, um, and you know, only certain things can happen. Um, when it comes to taking somebody out, you know, people are scared to die. You can't, die, you're not going to die before your appointed time, mm -hmm. you know, and before you came here, you, you came here with a, with a purpose. Um, and one thing about the religious ideas, like that's all throughout the scriptures, like all those guys in, in the Bible who, they were in touch with these these beings like they saw them they meditated they spoke to them they came to them many many different ways um they're all seeing them all in the sky gazing at the sun all of this stuff so they were in touch and and they freely talked about it they freely shared it was scoffed at by the majority but for the ones who hey something greater like they understood they got the message and they did you know, they were here to awaken the 144,000 who were alive when they were on the earth. And so same thing. They, they, the stories of the disciples and even Jesus, like when he was crucified and they finally got him and killed him, he said plainly, listen, he said, I, he said, right now I can call down a myriad of over 10,000 angels right now if I wanted to. He had become so familiar with them in relationship that if he wanted to, he could name them and they would show up and come down and destroy this place. Mm. That's how comfortable he became with the angels. And then Peter and those guys, and Jesus says, no man takes my life. Just know this guys, they're not killing me. I'm mm. giving my life. What I, my time is done. You know why? Because they can't kill me. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to lay my life down for you guys. So because when I go now, my spirit is is dispersed amongst all of you and all of you carry what I carry. And then you guys go forth and do the same thing. And that's the, that's what they did. And if you are, if the Christ is in you, you're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and it's it it's the anointing. It's it's protection. They couldn't kill any of those guys. Like the, the stories that are with the disciples, they tried to boil John and they tried to cut their heads off and their skin wouldn't cut. They, all of them, they couldn't kill them. And so and John the Revelator, where the book of Revelation was written, they had to exile him to an island by himself because they couldn't kill him. So they just had to get him away from everybody and just let him die out or, or whatever when his time was over after he did what he had to do and then you go on to read all the stories about this the the saints you know after they their stories of these people literally they cut cut their heads off and they're walking around holding their heads still preaching and still declaring these oracles and things and so many people of the dead raising and you couldn't kill them until it was their time to go so with everything that we've been through in the last three years that was learning a lot of that stuff for me brought me comfort mm -hmm. oh they're trying to kill us oh they're trying to kill us everything's trying to kill you if that's the case and so but maybe but be, you, nothing can take you out before your appointed time and you got to trust that mm -hmm. even if, if it's only true to you it brings you a sense of of confidence and comfort to know that you know you can't do nothing to me unless, you know, the man upstairs or the angels in the orders that they operate in says it's okay. For me, that brings me a lot of comfort. And I'm starting to find a lot of like hidden scriptures that kind of talk about that. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And that puts you the, like the confidence um, of that puts you in that, that higher frequency and attracts more positive things to you so fear is like that's the worst thing that we could expose ourselves to um so yeah having having faith is incredibly important and that's uh something that gives me comfort as well you know, they they aren't gonna take me out until it's my time to go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, we're, we're protected uh i mean i've been putting about putting this stuff in my music for years like so mm -hmm. it's really uh it's so weird how it's the it's all energy mm -hmm. like and it comes through whatever you do mm -hmm. you know it's, if, if you're if i write a song it it bleeds out in there even if i'm not trying to mm -hmm. it comes from the perspective of a person who is encountered or seen and then eventually you know it just starts permeating everything what is the message behind it why why do you want to see this why 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 and uh you know it's there's an impartation in beholding i mean it's like the person who didn't really catch anybody's attention at school you know growing up maybe they were, were like a wallflower or never dated or anything and then someone shows you attention like how does that oh my god somebody noticed me or the the you know the popular person noticed you when you have gone unnoticed and then you're now starting to get attention what does it do to the individual getting the attention and so i think that that's vice versa the way that this is working with angels and consciousness and ETs or whatever the case is, they've been here for a long time. There is no like, they're not coming, we're getting invaded. No, when we were yet primitive, uh, we, we have paintings of them. You know what I'm saying? So this, they're coming to take us out. No, they would have been done that. So share a different uh, narrative, please. Um, but it is something that's very ancient and and we're, we're connected to it. And, and we're remembering, like you said, Mm -hmm. remembering who we are and where we came from yeah that's the biggest thing is remembering <laughs> that process so it's fun yeah yeah definitely they've been here for a very very long time they were showing me like ufos and dinosaurs 
<laughs> like millions of years ago. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they've been here for a very long time. And the angels as well. Well, um, you want to promote your work, let people know where they can find you. As you, you have a podcast, mm-hmm. we got um, a website, a lot of this footage online, TikTok. Where's your, where, like, where, where do you spend, what social platform do you spend most of your time on? Um, lately, it's been YouTube for the past year. Um, so I do lives every Sunday where I channel um, different, we'll do different things like, next weekend we're do, we're opening the third eye so i i do lives every sunday on my youtube channel my youtube channel is lily nova starseed i also post i have some like ufo footage how to capture ufos kind of different types of content available on my youtube i do have tiktok i haven't posted in a while but i've got a lot of footage in in short videos on there too uh lily nova dot in dot space and then instagram as well, but I spend a lot of time on YouTube. And then my website is uh, lilynovaspaceart.com. And I have my astrophotography on there, different types of like sessions I do and in and information on there as well. So awesome. So awesome. Um, what, so what are you, what, what, what's next for you with photography and stuff? Is there something like that you want to like, cause it's, you know, we always want better equipment or if I get that, like we got some, pretty freaking powerful equipment in our hands, even with just with your cell phone, you know, but it's like, if I get that telescope or if I get that, it's going to be next level. Do you have any, any plans on um, trying anything different to, to film or whatever? Well, now that, so I've been grinding very hard on YouTube recently and, um, and communicating with these beings in kind of a different way. So I haven't been out with the camera as much lately. I've been really focusing on the ability to see with my third eye uh, in in meditation and communication. So I've been focusing on that very, very much so. But now that the weather's getting nicer, I'm excited to get back out there. So I kind of took like a hiatus um, during winter and I have a Nikon D5300 DSLR camera also so in case anybody was wondering or or whatever but like you said you can just take this with your phone as well but yeah i'm excited for nice weather because i've learned a lot over winter (laughs) there's been a lot of of changes over winter so yeah i'm excited now that it's getting nicer to spend some more time outside it's so funny i uh when i started out i i I could only experience them i it was i could never never let me film you know um Mm -hmm. And it was like, hey, just be in the moment, and you know, you run and grab the phone, and then you're out them out of the moment because you're worried about your phone, and they had something to show you, and they had eight seconds to do it, but it took you ten to get the phone, you know, that kind of thing. But now it's come around to where, like, I have a piece, and I'm able to catch them on camera, you know, and still be in there, um, you know, in in the heart space to you know, to kind of bring them in and to to communicate, um, but still have it filmed. And they know you're filming so for them to show up or to leave because like at first they would never show up with any camera so i just like yeah we're not there's no filming in this this is personal this is just for you i don't know how much of this let me say this is just for me you know mm-hmm. but but obviously not you know if uh because i do i don't have like you know some people try to they hold back i don't like i just i share because the younger version of me listening to this needs to hear it. Right. I'm seeing these things too. They're amazing. They're beautiful. They're friendly and they want to help you and you're not going to get killed. Don't worry. You know, it's like, <laughs> not gonna, they're not going to kill you, man. You're good. So I'm just <laughs> talking to that young man out there listening or young, young lady. It doesn't matter who. Yeah. <laughs> Avatar. But yeah, definitely. That's incredible that you're, um, I'm excited to see, you know, what else you are able to capture. And yeah, they know like, they know that you're filming them. So a, a lot of the time it, it can be like the last time that I went out recently, I caught two ships appear and they started circling each other. And these were physical ships that I could see, which was pretty nuts. And then I caught some other orbs near the phone. And then I went out the next time I had a profound spiritual experience where I felt them surrounding me and I had my camera, but I didn't catch her. I didn't capture anything on camera. So sometimes it is just, you know, personal, um, uh, 
but yeah, I'm excited to see what you capture. So thank you so much for having me on. It was so nice speaking with you again. Sure, for sure. No, I enjoyed it. And um, thank you for everything you do and um, furthering consciousness and, and love and, and peace. And thank you so much. We'll have to do it again. Thank you, Lily. Yeah, thank you, you too. All right, take care. Have a good one. Thanks. You know, it's been said that angels are actually angles of light. And I find that very fascinating because to interact or to see them, you have to adjust the different angles of light because you can see them in the different spectrums within the different colors of light. Spectrum is actually a very interesting word. Spectrum comes from the term specter, which are phantoms or ghosts, entities that exist and travel by the light. So these angels can be seen and communicated with. You can actually catch them on camera. I find this very interesting as well because the way that we perceive anything is conducive to the amount or maybe the type of light that we have within us. Jesus says that the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. The angles or angels of light that you experience outside of you are conducive to the angles, amount, and type of light that is within you. episode folks to hear more episodes of the truth seeker podcast head over to truthseeker.com and if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards go to our patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker